Hey, Jason here. Today we're going to just take a quick look at my game room and uh, my collection. Um, it is not a huge collection at this point. I've only been doing it for a little over a year or so. So I'm really doing this to kind of keep almost like a journal or a log of how the collection kind of grows over time. And so while it's small now, hopefully in a few years I'll be able to look back at this video and it'll be a nice comparison as we kind of jump through time and see how you know it grows uh, throughout the you know different years. So um, first thing we're going to do is take a look at the uh, the games. And so uh, this is actually let me back up here a little bit. This is actually custom shelving um, that I made. Because uh, I used to buy the particle board shelving that you see in stores. And uh, what I found was that I just kept outgrowing it. And it was kind of crappy and I didn't really like the shelf. So I decided just to make my own. Um, it was pretty easy to do. Um, basically we just have, you know, cabinet style one by. Um, and what I did was I did a, a 10 inch one down here at the bottom. And then I believe this is a 6 inch one up here at the top. And that gives me plenty of space to display some of my consoles and boxed items down there on the bottom part portion. And then uh, up at the top, if you use the six spot, one by sixes, you see that it's pretty much perfect. I mean, the games basically fit right in there. The only games that seem to, the only things that seem to kind of hang off the edge are some of these uh, Blu-ray collections. But otherwise, you know, Nintendo games fit perfectly. Um, you know, down the line there. Uh, Super Nintendo obviously fit well there too. Blu-rays and DVDs also fit pretty well. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to take a look at, you know, kind of where my collection is at this point, and then, um, you know, we'll kind of come back and keep revisiting this throughout the years and just see how it grows. So the first up is going to be my Nintendo collection. I think there's about 100 games here. I don't know how many fit across one shelf. I've never counted that. Um, you know, so just to kind of look at some of the notable ones, uh, you know, we've got uh, Batman, which is right here. Uh, that is a great game for the NES. Uh, Castlevania, right here. Gotta have Castlevania. Oh, Baseball Stars is one. Um, I was never huge into the sports games, or at least for the Nintendo Entertainment System, but Baseball Stars is one of the great ones. This one has a battery built in allows you to save rosters and create your own teams and things like that. So that was a really good game there. Uh, Double Dragon is another really good one. DuckTales is a classic. Uh, you see I've got uh, both of the Ghostbusters. Not the greatest games in the world, but worth having. Um, Ghost and Goblins is another good game, but very difficult. Um, let's see here. I've got some of the Mega Mans. I'm working on that right now. I've only got three of them, two, three, and four. Uh, the other ones are quite expensive, so we're going to get those as we go. But uh, for right now, I've got uh, 2, 3, and 4, and those are some of the better ones, in my opinion, anyway. Um, let's see, Metroid. Can't have a collection without Metroid in it. That's just a great game. Ninja Gaiden, very difficult, but also a very good game. Um, I've got the uh, Mr. Dream Punch in it. So this was after... Uh, this, one, this version right here came uh, after the Mike Tyson's version did, and... This is the one that I had growing up, so that was the first one that I purchased. I will get Mike Tyson's version eventually, but uh, I wanted the one that I had growing up, and so, and luckily for me, this one's even cheaper than the Mike Tyson's version, so, um, you know, score there. Uh, you got Rescue Rangers, um, that's a good game. You got all three of the Robocops, Robocop 3, that's actually a difficult one to find, that was given to me. Um, by, you know, a friend of mine who just had a bunch of Nintendo stuff and just didn't want it anymore. and had no idea, you know, and so uh, I told them that some of it might be worth some money, but they just wanted to give it to me, and I'm not going to complain. Um, then you've got, I've got all the Marios. Uh, you got Super Mario Brothers. Uh, these are just the different variations of the cart. So you got Super Mario Brothers by itself, Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt, and then you have the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt and the, the Track Me game. Uh, then we've got Super Mario Brothers 2 and then 3 down there. Um, down here on the other end, um, let's see here. Any notable ones we've got? Top Gun. Uh, that's an underrated game in my opinion. A lot of people hate on it, but I think it's pretty decent. Uh, then we've got the Turtles games. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Turtles 2, the arcade game. I already always really liked that game. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it was a decent 
port, I guess, of what you got in the arcade. Uh, then I've got my uh, Zelda cartridge. Um, it's not a very expensive game or a very uncommon game, but I keep it in the plastic case because um, I don't want it to get chipped. And the gold cartridges tend to chip, so um, if you do have the Zelda or the Adventures of Link in the gold cart, I would keep those in the cases because those are tough to find sometimes in really good condition and this one is a very good condition copy so I keep that in the case just so I won't get chipped when I'm pulling it in and out. All right, um, I've got my Super Nintendo collection uh, which may be the smallest one of the smallest parts of my collection that Nintendo 64. I don't have a lot of games but I do have a lot of ones that I really like. Uh, I've got Batman Returns which is a good beat-em-up. Um, I've got uh, let's see here um, Clay Fighter, which is pretty good. Um, Disney's Aladdin, which is a really good game. Donkey Kong Country, F-Zero, all really good games. Mega NX, I would eventually like to get the other three in that series, but, you know, those are pretty darn expensive. Uh, Pilot Wings is good. Star Fox, Street Fighter, um, Super Empire Strikes Back, which I think is the best of the Star Wars games for the Super Nintendo. Uh, let's see here, what have we got? We got Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario World, All Must Haves, and so those are my Super Nintendo games. Trying to build that collection up. Those are tough, because those seem to be some of the more expensive games to buy um, when you're collecting retro games. Uh, then we've got my Nintendo 64 collection, and unless you're willing to put third-party labels on this, on these games, as you can see, they're tough to see on the side. So I've got some notable games. Uh, Super Mario 64, I've got to have that one. Um, let's see here. I've got Star Fox 64, uh, Wipe out there. So, um, probably my most expensive and notable game for the N64 is going to be Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, uh, which is right there. I actually got that for free, so somebody just gave that to me. And uh, it came with a whole bunch of, uh, it was a mother trying to get rid of her son's video games and he was no longer wanting any of them and, you know, didn't care, so that's a pretty good steal there. Uh, down here, I've just got a bunch of Blu-rays. Um, as you can see, I've got my um, my bank, my piggy bank. Uh, here's the NES Advantage, and then I've got some uh, Xbox 360 and PC games sitting there on the shelf. All right, uh, down here is my PlayStation uh, games as well. Um, I actually had a lot more of these, and at the time I wasn't collecting these or holding on to them, and I got rid of them. And now I'm kicking myself because now I actually want to go back and I want to hang on to these because I think PlayStation, original PlayStation that is, is going to be more and more collectible the older it gets, and I think we're getting to that point. So I'm trying to hold on to as many original PlayStation games as I can, and uh, you know I've got some good ones in here. You know Metal Gear Solid, which is just one of the best original PlayStation games that there is, in my opinion. I've got, you know, Crash Bandicoot, and all of the Tomb Raiders, uh, you know, Jet Moto, Cool Borders, Silent Hill. So I've got a lot of games here for the PlayStation I really like, and it is one of the consoles that I had growing up, so, you know, it makes it easy to, to collect for. Alright, just got some uh, action figures and, you know, car, uh, the Batmobile over here. Um, next down here is going to be my GameCube and my Wii collection. Um, so you can see I have a number of uh, Wii, uh, GameCube and Wii games. Um, you know, I've got some good ones for the GameCube. Nothing super pricey at this point. Uh, just some games that I really like for it. And I think the GameCube is one of the better systems to collect for. And it's, it's one of those systems you don't find as many games out there. I don't know if it just wasn't as popular as some of the other consoles, but... I really like the GameCube. I think it's a cool system, and so, you know, I, I started collecting for it. It's just a small collection now, but it's growing. And then I've got my Wii uh, collection over here. This is also not a, not a console that I had growing up, but one that I've kind of come to like. I think the Wii is very underrated. I think people kind of write it off as that, you know, gimmicky system that you play, you know, Wii Sports with for two weeks and then you never touch again. The Wii has got some of the best, like, platforming games and things like that. I mean, I think the, the new Super Mario Brothers game, I think it's one of the best in the series. If, if not the best uh, Super Mario Brothers game, I think it's just really good. Then you've got Mario Kart, which is good on there. The Galaxy games, you know, Super Smash Brothers and, and such. 
Um, so that's my Wii collection. All right, as far as my uh, consoles, um, you can see I have a number of box consoles down here at the bottom. Um, these are all complete. Uh, so I have the uh, Control Deck console complete, the uh, Nintendo 64, there's my doll Kobe. Hey Kobe. Um, there is the uh, Nintendo Action Set complete, That's a, the box is in excellent shape on that. Um, then we have the Power Pad, uh, fully in the box. Um, Nintendo's Player Guide and uh, PlayStation, then I have a, an extra N64 console down there at the bottom. Right, um, up at the top I've got an Xbox 360. I've got uh, an extra uh, Nintendo GameCube. I've got the uh, Model 2 Super Nintendo right here. It's a really good one to have. All right. um, I've got some extra stuff up here on the shelves too. I've got some uh, you know, Amiibo characters. I've got this cool uh, 3D printed sign uh, that a friend of mine made. It's really cool. Um, I've got, uh, he also made me this uh, Glock Nintendo Zapper. It's pretty cool. It's it's not real. It's basically just a prop, but I mean it's really detailed and cool. And I'll put a link to his Etsy store in the video description if you're interested in uh, submitting any custom orders for things like that for your collection. All right. I also got this uh, uh, Batarang that he printed for me as well. It's kind of cool. He made it look like it was like metal. With the paint job that he did. Alright, so that's pretty much my game collection. Um, I've got a lot of digital games too, but you know, we're not going to walk through those today. Um, then here's my setup uh, for how I play games, at least my retro games. Um, I use the old school uh, tube television for playing retro games because that's just the best way to play them. I mean, you can pick these TVs up you know, for $10, $15 sometimes, and I got this one for free. A lot of people are just giving them away because they're bulky and they don't want them anymore. But these things are the best for playing retro games. And uh, you can see uh, down there I have uh, some drawers. That's where I keep my Nintendo and uh, accessories, and my controllers, zapper guns, and things like that. Um, and then up here I've got a remote control Mario Kart. How I um, hook all this stuff up is just with a simple switcher on the back. Um, nothing too crazy. This switcher just allows me to have three separate outputs to the TV. Um, and so I've got each one of my consoles hooked up to that. So all I do is I just, you know, click the button on the back here and that's going to allow me to switch between the consoles. And so that's how I'm playing it. See, I have uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo and GameCube hooked up there now. And whenever I want to play N64, I just swap out the N64 console uh, with the GameCube's connections because it pretty much uses the same connections for that. Right, and then uh, behind the TV I have these posters. I actually made these. Um, they're pretty easy to make, so I just printed off the uh, art cover for some of these boxes. And uh, what I did was, you can see, I, I went and I just bought some uh, like foam poster board from the hobby store. I spray glued them to that, and then just uh, took a pair of uh, you know um, cutters and just kind of cut them out. And then I just affixed them to the wall here. And I think they make a cool uh, effect right here behind the uh, playing area. And they turned out pretty good. Um, if I had to do over again, I'd probably um, make them either canvases or put them in frames or something like that. But I thought that turned out pretty cool. All right. Um, as far as the rest of my game room, um, you see up here I've got the uh, Nintendo Now You're Playing With Power poster. Um, over here is going to be my desk. Uh, this is where I work, and this is also where I do my PC gaming. Um, so I've got a desktop down here. I've also got a laptop. And uh, so that's where I do all my PC gaming um, on Steam and such. Um, I've got a Nintendo picture up there. I've got the Mario one. And then across the room, I've got the Luigi one. Somebody gave those to me for my birthday. I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, then over here, I just got my gaming chair. It's where I usually sit when I'm playing. You know, some printers and some bookshelves. And then my fish tank. Um, so that was just a quick look at my gaming room. Obviously, like I said, it's... It's small right now, but uh, it's growing at a rapid rate. You know, just a year ago, I had only a few games, and now I've got, you know, a growing collection. It's getting bigger every day, so um, I just keep scouring Craigslist and, you know, thrift stores and flea markets and eBay for good deals, and, you know, they're out there. Just keep looking. Um, so that is it for the gaming tour for 2000, early 2017. We'll see you guys later.